All right. So in section 7.1, we're going to look at the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I know we've used it before, but we're going to amp up the sophistication a little bit. Uh, so the objectives for this lesson, uh, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for right triangle side lengths. And uh, we're going to generate and identify Pythagorean triples. Doing some math. Get those tools, because we're doing some math. Don't forget all those rules. Yeah, yeah we're doing some math. First, uh, a quick little algebraic proof. There's literally hundreds of proofs for the Pythagorean theorem. This one's pretty uh, basic uh, and easy to follow, I think. If we consider these four little right triangles and the square that is inside of it, if we look at each side of this big square, uh, each side length is A plus B. So the area of the big square is A plus B as a side length squared. Uh, also, we could kind of break the area up into the sum of the area of the five little polygons here. So the area of the square is also four of the area of these little red triangles, one-half AB, the triangle area formula, plus the square in the middle, C squared. Now, because both of these areas are the same, we can use the transitive property of equality to set these two areas equal to each other. And then when we distribute... Uh, binomial distribution, uh, sometimes called foiling, um, we get a squared plus a times b, which is a, a times b, plus b times a, which is another a, b, uh, plus b squared. Uh, and on the right side of the equation, the 4 times 1 half is 2. Now we can then subtract 2 a, b from both sides, giving us a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, I like to write the Pythagorean theorem as uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. It's the same thing, but we'll see in uh, the next section why it's sort of convenient to have uh, c squared on the left. It doesn't really matter in this section, but it sort of matters in the next section, or I should say it's more convenient in the next section. So a quick reminder, uh, again, this is mostly review, but the C in the Pythagorean theorem is the hypotenuse, the side across from the right angle. And the two other sides that make the right angle are called the legs. Now, it's not really going to matter which one you call A and which one you call B. You get the same answer each time. But the most important part is when you're setting this up, C has to be the hypotenuse. Again, A and B don't really matter. And we've seen this before, too, but a quick review. When using the Pythagorean theorem to solve for a hypotenuse, all we have to do to manipulate this equation is take the square root of both sides. Uh, so the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and we definitely have seen that a lot, including the distance formula. Uh, and a teeny bit of work, but not much, to manipulate this equation to solve for one of the legs. Uh, let's say we know what the hypotenuse C and what one of the legs B is, and we were trying to solve for A. We can subtract B squared from both sides, so C squared minus B squared equals A squared, and then take the square root of both sides of this equation, and the leg equals the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. Okay, the last uh, bit of building vocabulary uh, and ideas, and we've sort of seen this before, but now we'll formally define them. Uh, a Pythagorean triple is a set of three whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and the list actually goes on and on forever, uh, but here are the first few of them. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17. Um, just for example, looking at the three, four, five, the hypotenuse obviously is going to be the largest side, uh, in a triangle. So in the right triangle, so the five is the hypotenuse and three and four are the legs.
Uh, so 25 equals 9 plus 16, and that, of course, is true. So uh, there are three numbers, 3, 4, and 5, that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Three whole numbers, that is. Those are called Pythagorean triples. All right, let's take a look at a few skills and examples. All right, the first skill that we're going to uh, partially review and partially maybe see for uh, one of the first times is simplifying radicals. We should be old pros at simplifying radicals from all our work with the geometric mean and the distance formula from earlier this year. But just a quick reminder, when you have a composite number inside a square root, you can break up the square root into the product of the square roots of the factors. So for example, if we had the square root of 24, uh, 24 is 4 times 6, so the square root of 24 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. We're looking for perfect squares to factor out of our composite numbers because perfect squares, of course, can be simplified. Now, when you're in algebra next year, you are going to need to uh, consider the positive and negative version when you take a square root. But here in geometry, where distance is always positive, we'll just use the positive version. Um, but don't let your algebra teacher uh, catch you off guard. Uh, in algebra, you will have to have a negative and positive answer to a square root. This, I think we've talked about a little bit before, but um, let's make sure... We review this and try a couple examples real quick ourselves because this is going to show up. I'm not really going to want you to use decimals at all with the Pythagorean theorem. Everything is going to be uh, either whole numbers or simplified radicals. If you want to square a simplified radical, when you multiply um, a simplified radical times itself, we're really multiplying like four things here, the a times the root b times another a times another root b. And of course, you can swap around the order of uh, the order of numbers or quantities when you multiply them. So a times a is a squared. Root b times root b is b. When you multiply a radical by itself, you just get the whole number. So this is a result that's going to end up popping up a couple of times. Let's try a couple examples real quick before we move on to Pythagorean theorems and Pythagorean triples. All right, you try these. All right, let's take a look at a couple examples here, and then I will uh, remind you the similar triangles trick shortcut for the Pythagorean theorem. I'll work it out the long way first and show you why the trick is so time-saving. So we're looking for the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the legs. So this is 16 plus 36, which is the square root of 52. Now 52 is 4 times 13. 4 is a perfect square. So we got a 2 root 13 unit side length. When 
going for one of the legs, whether you call it A or B, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this time we're going to use the leg version of the Pythagorean theorem, where we take the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the known leg squared. So we got 81 minus 9. That's 72. And 72 is 36 times 2. So root 72 is root 36 times root 2, 6 root 2. Now that's all well and good, and you can always get the answer doing the Pythagorean theorem like this. Um, there's a shortcut using similar triangles. If you happen to notice, you can factor uh, the same number out of both the sides given, then consider the factored version. If I factor a 2 out, my side lengths become 2 and 3. You might be able to do the Pythagorean theorem with the smaller numbers in your head. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 plus 9 is root 13, but then our scale factor of 2. Because the 4, 6, 2 root 13 is similar to the 2, 3 root 13 uh, with a scale factor of 2 to 1. So you can kind of like factor the common number out, think of that as a scale factor, and then do the Pythagorean theorem with the smaller right triangle. And oftentimes the numbers are small enough that you can do that in your head. Uh, for example, if I factor a 3 out of these side lengths, hypotenuse 3, side length 1, now I'm looking at 3 times 3 squared minus 1 squared. 9 minus 1 is 8. Now remember, root 8 is really 2 root 2. So we're looking at 3 times 2 root 2 or 6 root 2. Nice little shortcut. You don't necessarily have to use the similar triangles trick because, of course, the whole long way Pythagorean theorem totally gets you the answer as well. If you have uh, simplified radicals as your sides, not a problem. We can just set up the Pythagorean theorem with our simplified radicals, remembering our rules on how to square simplified radicals. So it is the hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared. And these parentheses are important, as we discussed while doing coordinate proofs. So don't get lazy and don't put them there. Um, Make sure they're there. They need to be there so that the square is applied to both the 5 and the root 3. So 5 root 3, 25 times 3 is 75 minus 25. Uh, A is the square root of 50, which of course, 50 being 25 times 2 25 being the perfect square. 5 root 2. Let's try this one with the shortcut of using the similar right triangles. I'm going to factor a 2 out of the side lengths that I have and do the Pythagorean theorem with the 2 and root 3. So 2 squared minus root 3 squared. And here I get 2. 4 minus 3 is just 1, actually. So look at that. Square root of 1 is 1.
so b equals 2. Always worthy of a circle in the final answer. Okay, with Pythagorean triples, three whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. There's really an infinite number of them. I have the first few listed here. Um, perhaps in a, a future video or in-class exercise, I'll, I'll show you a neat little algebra expression um, equation where you can generate uh, multiple Pythagorean triples. Um, the most basic one is the 3, 4, 5. Uh, if we take the 3, 4, 5 right triangle with the legs 3 and 4 units, hypotenuse 5 units, if we consider the similar triangle where all of the side lengths are multiplied by 2, we actually generate another Pythagorean triple. Because uh, if we square all of the sides, 36 plus 64 is 100, which is 10 squared. And in fact, if we multiply 3, 4, and 5 by any whole number, that gives us another Pythagorean triple. Uh, and then we can actually do that for many or all of the uh, Pythagorean triples. We can take uh, another Pythagorean triple, the 5, 12, 13, multiply it by 2, multiply it by any whole number, and that generates a new Pythagorean triple. Um, and that is a concept of using similar right triangles to generate uh, an infinite number of Pythagorean triples. So that's our video on the Pythagorean Theorem. Make sure to drop an elbow on that like button, subscribe, comment, share with all of your friends. But more importantly, make sure you do the practice problems in class and ask any questions. Feel free to watch this video again and uh, look forward to seeing you in class. Take it easy.